Shalom, 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 my brothers and sisters of the nation of Israel. Welcome to another Sabbath class, end of the week Sabbath class, and uh, your brother Ananias for AOI, the awakening of Israel. And it's an honor, it's a privilege as always to be able to come before you to give you another edifying, uplifting lesson with hopes and regards of lifting up your spirits and giving you more knowledge than you had yesterday. And I uh, appreciate you, brothers and sisters, tuning in as always. But before we get started, we want to give all honor, glory, praise to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Yahweh being the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shah being the Son, who the world calls Christ. And through his strength, sacrifice, and example, we are all able to be here today to be edified and uplifted in the spirit. All right. So once again, appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, happy Sabbath to you all. Uh, shalom. Shalom. Peace and grace to you all. Uh, all praise to the most high for letting everybody make it throughout the week to the end of the week, you know, to the Sabbath, you know, where we rest up, where we don't do no work, no buying, no selling, uh, no working, no cooking, uh, no mourning, no crying, no weeping, no sex, but where we rejoice, we recruit, recoup, excuse me, and learn more about the most high, what we are supposed to be doing as Israelites. And this message is directed to who? The nation of Israel, so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American in the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. So, as you can see in the intro, uh, today's class is called The Children of the Light versus The Children of Darkness. Don't let them turn your light off. Don't let them turn your light off. Now, what do I mean by that? You know, because when you read the scriptures, you realize two things, basically. That there are children of light and there are children of dark. There's a, a twofold to everything. You know, we realize, be thinking ourselves coming back into this truth or coming into this truth, that we realize that we have been hated, we have been despised constantly throughout history, throughout time. You know, why? Because we were chosen as the nation of Israel by the Most High God to be his chosen people, the light of the world, you know. And contrary to that, we have the children of the darkness, which are those individuals who are against us, who oppose the will of the Most High God. So that's what today, today's class is going over or going into. All right. uh, the children of the light versus the children of the light or the darkness. And don't let them turn your light off. All right. So we're going to start with the book of Second Edris, chapter six, verse one. And uh, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that like and subscribe and share this content because this is uh, needed material for our brothers and sisters to uh, understand. And by you sharing it, it reaches the four corners of the world. So this helps in you and helps us spread this gospel worldwide. Make sure you're taking notes as well. Uh, we read from the King James Version Bible with the Apocrypha. All right. The apocrypha are the hidden books that were removed from the original text. Uh, 14 books, to be exact, uh, to add along with the 66, which would give us 80 books. Uh, but nonetheless, we read from the King James Version. Make sure you're uh, following along, taking notes. Uh, should be a pretty interesting class. But like I said, we're going to go to the book of Second Esdras. Uh, I'm in the wrong book off top. Let me uh, put it on the screen for you. All right. All right. Is this the right one? No, it's not. Bear with me. All right, we're going to go to the book of 2nd Esdras, chapter 6. We're going to start at verse 1. And it says, And he said unto me, In the beginning, when the earth was made, before the borders of the world stood, or ever the windows blew. So this is the prophet Esdras speaking to the Lord, and he's trying to get an understanding as to what's going on. So the Lord sent a messenger, sent the angel, Uriel, to speak with him. And uh, he's explaining basically... Uh, who was before all things? I'm going to read it again. The book of 2nd Esdras, chapter 6, verse 1. It says, And he said unto me, In the beginning, 
when the earth was made, before the borders of the world stood, or ever the winds blew, before it thundered and lighted, lightened, or ever the foundations of paradise were laid, before the fair flowers were seen, or ever the movable powers were established, before the innumerable multitude of angels were gathered together, or ever the heights of the air were lifted up, before the measures of the firmament were named, or ever the chimneys in Zion were hot, and the air, the present years were sought out, and or ever the inventions of them that now sin were turned, before they were sealed, that have gathered faith for a treasure, then did I consider these things, and they all were made through me alone, and through none other. By me also they shall be ended by none other. Who was this speaking? This is Yahweh Shah speaking. He was saying he was before the angels were created, before thunder and enlightenment, before the winds blew, before the foundations of paradise were laid, before the flowers were seen, before years. He was there. He created all things. You understand? Everything was made by Yahweh Shah. Who was that? The son of the Most High Yahweh. All right. The word that was made flesh. All right, let's go to the book of Revelation. <clears throat> book of Revelation, matter of fact. Let me, I need to try something else right quick. Bear with me, Israel. Right. Let's try this one more time. All right, all right. So we're going to go to the book of Revelation, chapter 4, verse 11, and it reads, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So we understand by reading this that everything that was created was created by Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, but it was also created for what? His pleasure. His pleasure. Not ours, but for his pleasure. So from there, let's go to the book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 42, verse 22. Sirach or Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 42, verse 22. All right, and it reads, oh, uh, am I in the right book? <clears throat> so rock 42, 22. All right, and it reads, oh, how desirable are all his works and that a man may see even to a spark. All things live and remain forever for all uses. And they are all obedient. So all things were created by the Most High, and they are obedient. Whether good or bad, they are obedient. All right. Verse 24 said, All things are double one against another, and he have made nothing imperfect. So all things are double once one against another. All right. Just like you got light and dark. You know what I'm saying? You they are created one against another, good and evil. Verse 25 says, one thing establish the good or, or another, and who shall be filled with beholding his glory? So by reading this, we understand that everything is established by another. Like I said, you got life, you got death. You got wickedness, you got righteousness. You got light, you got dark. What is the title of today's class uh, or tonight's class? Children of the light versus the children of the dark. But don't let them turn your light out. All right. And what do I mean by that? We'll get to that in a little bit. But let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 55. Book of Isaiah, chapter 55. Make sure you're following along and taking notes. Okay, we just pulled out some key scriptures right there, showing you that all things were made through Yahweh. 
He was the word of God, made flesh. But before everything was put together, everything stood, he was there in the beginning. So we have to understand these things. The angels were not before Yahusha or Christ, as you know. They were not before him. He created them. Understand it. All right. So a lot of people will say, well, that's your own understanding or whatever the case. But understand that uh, his ways and his wisdom are higher than our ways. And the scriptures tell you these things. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 8. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. So as vain as we think and as deep as we think we think, our thoughts are not his thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. So when we think that we're actually doing something, our ways, our thoughts don't mean anything to the most high. You know, it, the way that we think in this world is foolishness compared to the thoughts of the most high and his ways. We have to understand these things. I'm going to keep reading, though. It says, uh, verse 9, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Because a lot of people uh, have that narrative that God loves everybody. That's not in the scriptures. That's not in his word. That's not how the most high deals. Well, I, I, I can't accept it. Your ways are not his ways and your thoughts are not his thoughts. He cares not about how you feel, nor what you think. That's what we have to understand, being in his truth. But I'm going to keep reading. Verse 10. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but water the earth and make it to bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So a lot of people will use this type of scripture and say, well, see, he loves everybody because he lets it rain down on everybody. It rains, the sun shines on everybody, good or evil. The air blows for everybody. That's his thoughts. Those are his ways. But that is, does not determine how he thinks. Understand that. Or how we can compare it to him. But verse 11 says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. Meaning without accomplishing his goal. But it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it. So if he sent judgment, destruction, death, hey, it's going to do that. If it's going to uphold the righteous, the just, save, give salvation, that's what it's going to do. We have no partaking in that. We can't stop it, nor can we uh, prevent it or create it. The word of the Lord will go through and accomplish what it was uh, sent to do. So our thoughts and our ways are not here. A lot of people say, well, everybody can be a child of light. No, you cannot. Anybody can believe in. No, it wasn't set up that way. It wasn't designed that way. This is his movie. We got to follow his script. You know, it's just like any other movie that you would watch. You know, a director has a specific goal, an outcome that he wants to happen. And he declares it from the beginning, you know, and we're going to read that in a minute but let's go to the book of job chapter 4 verse 17 like i was saying a lot of people you know when you watch a movie or something or a director you'll see that uh the director has an idea or where he wants to go with his story his narrative and it really doesn't matter what the actors in the movie think they were designed to fit his narrative his story and whatever his story is it shall be accomplished because he's the one directing that movie that's how we got to look at how life is and the Bible. All right, let's go to the book of Job, chapter 4, verse 17. Shall mortal man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? Because a lot of our people had these discussions time in and time out while we out teaching on the highways and byways, even just talking amongst each other sometimes, you know. Sometimes we get ahead of ourselves and we tend to try to outthink the most high. Or make our ways more just than him. Uh, he'll forgive me for that. Oh, that's not that bad. You know, tend to slack off. Even the, uh, the people of the world, you know, they try to justify what they do, saying, hey, God love everybody. That's not in the scripture. That's not biblical. He only loves the Israelites, those who keep his commandments. 
Understand it. He has respect on the Israel. He hates the sinner. But you have people in the world saying, no, he hates the sin. In order for sin to be committed, a sinner had to do what? Commit the act. You know? Just like in order for you to win, it had to be somebody doing it. Think about that. But this world is so upside down and all the understanding is backwards. So man try to make yourself more just than the most high. You know? But we're going to move on to the next one. Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. Because as I stated earlier, uh, the director of the movie, Yahweh Shah, or Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, he's going to set up the script, the movie, how he uh, deems it to be. And it's going to play out just like he wanted to play out. We are merely pawns or actors in this movie. Whether good or bad, heroes or villains, we are just actors in this movie. But uh, Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10, it says, Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Now, we can ready to get into the class here in a minute. But I had to lay the foundation to let you understand, let our brothers and sisters know, and the enemies, those who uh, don't want to accept this truth, you have to understand that this life that we live in, the movie that's unfolding constantly, generation after generation, is of the most high. However he see fit, that's how it's going to play out. There is nothing moving out of moving and doing his own thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh death uh triumph you know uh catastrophes explosions everything happened because that's the way the most high designed it to be that's how he wants it to play out you know think about that but from the end he declared the beginning or declaring the end from the beginning excuse me things that are not yet done there's a lot of things that haven't happened yet but it's a lot that has, and those things that have happened will continue to happen. But his counsel shall stand, and he will do all my pleasure. He's going to do his own pleasure. Just like we brought out earlier, all things were created for his pleasure when we read Revelation 4 and 11. All right? So from there, let's go back to the book of Second Esdras. And let's go to chapter 9. Second Ezra chapter nine. I'm gonna try to move quick because we got a lot to cover, but bear with me, Israel. <clears throat> Let's go to the book of Second Ezra chapter nine, verse 18. And it reads, And now when I prepared the world which was not yet made, you see that? Prepared the world. You know, just like when you order a package. Before you put it together, you got all the materials laid out to the side before you start building. All right. It said, and now when I prepared the world, which was not yet made, even for them to dwell in that now live, no man spake against me. You see that? No man spake against me. All right. Let's keep reading, though. For then everyone obeyed. Talking about the spiritual. All the spirits, they obeyed. They didn't speak against the most high. For then everyone obeyed. But now the manners of them which are created in this world that is made are corrupted by a perpetual seed and by a law which is unsearchable read themselves so before the earth was made everybody all the spirits did what they obeyed no man spake against them why because they were waiting to be put into their environment to do what they were created to do you see that but now that we in the world that was made are corrupted by a perpetual seed a perpetual seed what is that seed we'll get to that in a minute let's go to verse 20 it says so i considered the world and behold there was peril because of the devices that were come into it and i saw and spared it greatly and have kept me a great of a cluster and a plant of a great people we're gonna get into that who is that great people who is that plant Simply is Israel. Out of all the people, he chose one, one great, one nation of people, a plant of a great people. 
the nation of Israel. All right. Let's read verse 22. It said, let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain, meaning the other nations, and let my great, my people be kept and my plant for the great labor. Have I made it perfect? You see that? So he letting you know right there, let the other nations, the multitude of other men perish, which were born in vain, because the Lord did not create the other nations for glory, for honor. They were born in vain. They were born to serve us. We'll get into that as well. From there, let's go to the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 4, verse 29. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 4, verse 29. And it reads, If therefore that which is sown be not turned upside down, and if the place where the evil is sown pass not away, then cannot it come that is sown with good. So we're letting you know, talking about good and evil can basically, uh, one has to be turned over. <laughs> All right. Verse 30. It says, for the grain of evil seed, Second Ezra chapter 4, verse 30. For the grain of evil seed, you remember earlier, we read about that corruptible seed that was planted, that perpetual seed, all right? Second Ezra chapter 4, verse 30. I'll read it again. For the grain of evil seed have been sown in the heart of Adam from the beginning. Now, if you know anything about the scriptures, we all know if you've been in this truth for a while, you know what the heart is. For those who are new to this truth, when you... Speak about the heart. The heart is referring to your mind. The heart is referring to your mind. Let's prove that right quick. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 9. There's plenty of precepts to show what the heart is, but I'm just getting one that just popped in my head right quick. All right. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 9. And it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it so how can the heart that pumps in your chest that esau says your heart how can that be deceitful your mind is deceitful your thoughts can be deceitful that's why they have songs like my mind's playing tricks on me things like that scriptures that say uh sometimes your mind be wanting to tell you more than seven watchmen that sit in the tower because your mind will play tricks on you but going back to second Ezra it says uh, for the grain of evil seed have been sown in the heart of Adam from the beginning. So uh, evil seed was planted in his mind from the beginning. You see that? Because this is how the movie was made to play out. All right. And how much ungodliness have it brought up until this time? And how much shall it yet bring forth until the time of threshing come? understand that so a lot of our people especially when you're in the world you don't <clears throat> you don't have that understanding you think basically that everything went south when uh eve ate off the tree you think that's when the world went upside down it was already designed to be that way understand that like i said before you make any type of movie business plan you always you sit down first and you think about how you want it to go once you figure out how you want it to go and play out then you put everything together and say action and it's only popping you know so that's some key information that our brothers and sisters really don't know about so they have thoughts like oh man if Eve would have never ate that apple off the tree, man. We all still be walking around eating off trees, walking around butt neck. That's foolishness. The foolishness of this world. That's why we're supposed to study and read so we can get this understanding. True understanding. The words of the Most High God. All right, Verse 31. It says, Ponder now by thyself how great fruit of wickedness. You see that? What did it say? How great fruit of wickedness wickedness the grain of evil seed had brought forth so letting you know what type of fruit eve actually ate that adam and eve actually ate fruit of wickedness not a damn apple off a tree the word apple ain't even in the book of genesis you know 
But for some odd reason, Esau got the whole world thinking that Adam and Eve was two Edomites, two so-called white men and women. They ate an apple off a tree and they were talking to a snake wrapped around a tree. But that's not the case. That's why you got to read the Bible and study it. All right. That's why you got to get the apocryphal. Because it gives you the understanding that they don't want you to understand. They're trying to hide the history, hide your knowledge. So I'm going to read it again. Second Ezra chapter 4, verse 31 says, Ponder now thyself, meaning wonder how great fruit of wickedness the grain of evil seed had brought forth. Think about what happened, what was going on then and what's going on now. How wicked the earth was then and how it is now. How much more wicked it is now. You see? From now, let's go to 2 Ezra chapter 3. 2 Ezra chapter 3. And we're going to start at verse 4. <clears throat> and it reads, O Lord, who bears rule, thou spakest at the beginning when thou didst plant the earth, and that thyself alone and commandest the people. Commandest the people, all right? And gave us a body unto Adam without soul, which was the workmanship of thine hands, and didst breathe into him the breath of life, and he was made living before thee. So when he made Adam from the dust of the ground, he didn't have soul until he brewed or breathed the uh, breath of life into him. That's what you read in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. But he made, he gave Adam a body without soul. Then he breathed into him the breath of life. That's what these other nations don't have, the breath of life. That's why they cannot keep the commandments. Even though everybody's saying, whoever believes, they will not keep the commandments. They will always make up an excuse and try their damnedest not to keep them because they cannot, they will not. Even the people who claim to be Jews, who are not, and do lie, they cannot keep the commandments. They go against the commandments in every way. The Lord said put fringes, they put zit zits on, or zit zits, tassels on the bottom of their uh, garments. They got uh, yarmulkes on the top of their head. That ain't scripture, you know? They praying and bowing to a damn wall. Let me see if I can pull that up. <laughs> I forgot what it uh what that's actually called. Man, praying to wall. This is what you see. Now don't the commandments tell you that we are not supposed to bow down to anything on the, that's in the heavens? Uh that's on the earth and on the water. One of the curses said that our people would be serving wood and stone, but they claim to be the, the people of the Most High. Why are they bowing down and worshiping and kissing rocks, stone walls? That's simple as hell. Where do you see that in the scriptures? Nowhere. Letting you know that these are not the people. That's why their name is Jewish, trying to be like something, but they're not. But they are the darkness of this world. We'll get to that later, though. But going back to uh, Second Ezra chapter three, verse five, it said, "And gave us a body unto Adam without soul, which was the workmanship of thine hand, and did his breathing to him the breath of life." Now, what is the breath of life? The commandments. Matter of fact, uh, where I want to go with that. Uh, let's go to Sirach chapter. You know what? I'll go to Job 33 and 4. Let's go to the book of Job chapter 33, verse 4. Just to explain what the breath of life is. All right. Book of Job chapter 33, verse 4. It said, The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty have given me life. Hold up. Yeah. 
Let's go to uh, Sirach 1711 to also explain it. So Job was speaking on the same thing that was going on in the beginning. That the breath of life had given him life. Let me explain a little more right here. It's the book of Sirach chapter or Ecclesiastes in the Apocrypha chapter 17 verse 11. And it reads, besides this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for a heritage. You see that? That's how you understand what their breath of life was. The commandments. He gave us commandments. He said in Proverbs 72, keep my commandments and live. That's what made separated Adam from everybody else. He gave him the commandments. And he was to take those commandments and rule everybody else. <laughs> Excuse me. But from now, let's go back to 2nd Ezra, chapter 3. <clears throat> Bear with me. We're going to go back to verse 6. It says, And thou lettest him into paradise, which thy right hand had planted before ever the earth came forward. You see that? Lettest him into paradise, Eden where thy right hand had planted him. That's where you read in Genesis, to put him in the garden to till the ground, all right? Verse seven, it says, and unto him thou gavest commandment, that is the breath of life, gavest him commandment to love thy way, which he transgressed, and immediately thou appointest death in him and in his generations, of whom came nations, tribes, people and kindreds out of number you see that so when he transgressed the commandments we all understand that when he transgressed the commandment death was appointed and in, into him and everybody that came from him but our people point at, at eve for eating the so-called apple or eating the fruit out of the tree that's wicked as hell that's off but Let's read verse 8. It said, And every people walked after their own will. They did what the hell they wanted to do. And did wonderful things before thee and despised thy commandments. Just like they're doing today. Everybody walking around with that YOLO spirit. Can't nobody tell me nothing, spirit. I'm better than you, spirit. And every people that came out of Adam walked after their own will and did wonderful things before thee and despise thy commandments. That's why he decided to flood the earth. Because everybody was walking around doing what the hell they want to do, just like they're doing now. You know? But let's go down to verse 20. And he said, And yet, tookest thou not away from them a wicked heart, that thy law might bring forth fruit in them. So he didn't take away that evil seed. He let it remain. Because he, once again, did what? He kept that small remnant, that grape, that planted tree, his own, that small remnant that will wake up. Let's keep reading. Verse 21. It said, For the first Adam, being a bearing a wicked heart, transgressed and was overcome. And so be all they that are born of him. So everybody that came of Adam, they were going to break the commandments and be wicked. All right. Verse 22, thus infirmity was made permanent, permanent, and the law also in the heart of the people with the malignity of the root, so that the good departed away and the evil abode still. You see that? So by leaving that uh, wicked seed or that wicked heart, he didn't take it out. Uh, the heart of the people was rooted in wickedness. The good departed away, but the evil abode still. Just like today, you got a small remnant of Israel, the righteous, standing up trying to keep these commandments, but everybody else wicked as hell, even of our own people. That's why it said two-thirds of our people will be cut off and die because they will not re re uh, repent. They will continue to rebel and do their own damn thing. But that's not the case. Uh as to what we should be striving for. So let's go to the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 7, verse 19. 
Second Ezra chapter seven, verse nineteen. All right. And he said unto me, there is no judge above Yahweh, and none that have understanding above the highest. Verse 14, I went backwards. If then they that live labor not to enter these straight and vain things, they can never receive those that are laid up for them. I think I labeled that wrong. Wrote that down wrong. All right. Let me keep reading though. Verse 15, it says, Now therefore, why does let me see? Uh, I think I was supposed to start at seven. I started six, excuse me. Uh, second Ezra chapter seven, verse six. It says, There is also another thing: a city is built and set upon a broad field. And it's full of all good things. Talking about the kingdom. It says the entrance thereof is narrow and is set on a dangerous place to fall. Like as there is water on the right hand and on the left a deep water. And one only path between them both. Even between the fire and the water. So small that there could be but one man there. Go there at once. If this city now will give it unto a man for an inheritance. If he shall not pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? And I said, it is so, Lord. Then said unto me, he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. Because for their sakes, I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now is done. Then were the entrances of this world made narrow, Full of sorrow and travail, but uh, but they are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. For the entrances of the elder world were wide and sure, and brought immortal fruit. If then they that live labor not to enter these straight and vain things, they can never receive those that are laid up for them. So that's going into and breaking down to us how this is Israel's lot and how it has, has to play out. When Adam transgressed, guess what? We had to go through ups and downs. We had to go through trials and tribulations, the perils and the pains of this world. We had to deal with the evilness and wickedness of this world. We had to fight. We had to labor through those things in order to receive what was laid up for us. You know what I'm saying? So from there, let's go to uh, the additions of Esther. Chapter 10, verse 10. All right. The editions of Esther, chapter 10, verse 10. Because they left some of the book of Esther out of the original text. Because it explains a lot as well. But I'm not going to go through reading it. I just want to pull the quick scripture out of it. All right. And it says, uh, therefore, he made two lots, one for the people of God and another for all the gentiles so it's two lots two roles that our people have to play or not our people but it's two lots one for the children of god and those are the gentiles for the ones that god have to fight through wickedness chaos slavery captivity you know wickedness unrighteousness ungodliness of our own people of the world we have to fight through those things the other nations, their job is to be wicked. And when we go out of line or step out of line, their job is to put us in captivity. Have us to submit to them. That's how it is. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, let me prove that right quick. Uh, let's go to the book of Leviticus. Chapter 26. Bring this out quite a bit. But it just shows you that we were delivered into our enemy's hands. The book of Leviticus, chapter 26. And I, I'm going to start at 15. He said, this is the Lord talking to the nation of Israel through Moses. He said, if you shall despise my statutes, just like Adam did, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that you will not do all my commandments, just like Adam and the people that come from, him, but that ye break my covenant. He said, I will also do this unto you, and I will appoint over you terror, 
consumption and burning all that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. Verse 17, it says, And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursue it. So the Lord was going to give us into the hand of our enemies. If you're not of the nation of Israel, you would be considered an, in, an enemy. The so-called white man, the uh, Asian man, the uh, East Indian man, the uh, Arab man, and so on and so on. The Assyrian man, the Egyptian man, the Greek man. They, were, they are our enemies. But going back to editions of Esther, it says in verse 10, verse 10, Therefore, he had made two lots, one for the people of God and another for all the Gentile. Two different roles they had to play out. Understand that. Once again, our thoughts are not his thoughts and his ways are not our ways. He way above us. You know why? So his moving, his election, his whatever he says will happen. Let's prove that. Let's go to the book of Romans chapter nine. We're going to start at one. Book of Romans, chapter 9. I'm going to start at verse 1. Bear with me. Uh, past, uh, Book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 1. And it reads, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I wish I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. So this is Paul speaking to or this speaking through uh, the letter that was written to the Romans, saying that he wished that he could go through the things that Christ went through for the brothers and sisters. He says, who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law in the service of God and the promises? So this is one of them scriptures that uh, Christian pastors or Christians in general tend to overlook. Paul was admitting right there that he's an Israelite, and he was also stating the fact that everything pertains to us. Everything, the giving of the law was given to us. The covenants given to us. The service of the Most High God. The promise was given to us. You know, they tend to overlook these things. For their own vain glory. They want to justify their wickedness and try to give their glory to another nation, to that which does not profit. How do you try to accept or try to bring somebody else into the kingdom when it was not made or created for them? Understand that. That's foolishness. But verse 5 says, Who are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came? Who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. So Christ came and he was over all because he was before all. You know, and who Yahweh bless. All right. Verse six. Not as though the word of God have taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. That's a true statement. Even to this day, not all of our people are of Israel. Even though they born on this nation, that's a birthright. It's a blood lineage. But even those who are born in it, they still will not accept it. Therefore, they will not be of Israel. They that are of, not all Israel, which are of Israel. So all of our people ain't going to accept it. They're not going to accept that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai looks just like them. Or that the kingdom is for them. Or that the Most High hates uh, certain people, certain nations. They're not going to accept that. Therefore, they will turn and they will be with the enemy. Therefore, they will be cut off. That's part of that two-thirds who are of Israel but are not Israel. Verse 7, it says, Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So everybody come from Adam. They were created by the uh, Yahweh Shah. Everybody come from Adam, but they are not the children that were chosen. They are not the children of God. Because you got to come through Isaac. It said, in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Now, Isaac had two children, Jacob and Esau. 
Which one was blessed? We're going to read. Verse 8, that is, that which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. So you got the children of flesh and you got the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. The one who was promised, who was blessed, who was chosen, they are the children of the promise, the children of the light. Verse 9, for this is the word of promise. At this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, Jacob and Esau, they have not been born, neither having done any good or evil for that purpose of God, according to the election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. So we've heard so many different narrative stories. I mean, people saying Esau went to worship uh, the devil. That's why God hated him. That's why God didn't choose him. Or it didn't mean that, you know, all type of, but it clearly states in the New Testament by Paul, who everybody runs to. It says for the children being not yet born, they ain't been on, they ain't been on the earth. They haven't done anything. But for God, let me read it again. For the children being not yet born, this is Romans chapter nine, verse 11, by the way. For those who want to write that down, that's a key scripture. Um, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that call us. So it don't matter how much we pray trying to make Esau or these other nations worthy enough to make it into the kingdom. It's not going to happen. Not of works, but of him that call us. We can pray, we can fast, hey, the Lord ain't dealing with them. He's dealing with the nation of Israel. All right. Let's read. That's all I wanted to get. So we understand by that, that uh, the election might stand that the Lord set up. He had a certain grape, a certain plant, a nation of people. Understand that. Just like he got a favorite flower, favorite animal, smell. You know, you got favorites. And if you want to uh, go against that, hey, that's your own thoughts. But understand this, our thoughts are not his thoughts. So for now, let's go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1. Show you something else right quick about the children of light and the children of darkness. Let's go to Jeremiah, chapter 1. And we're going to go to verse... Started verse four and said, then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Everybody that heard this scripture before. But it's letting you know that before we, even today, every one of us, before we were formed in the womb, in the belly, he knew us. He knew what type of role he wanted us to play when we were on this earth while we're here. All right, I'm going to read it again. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. He's talking to Jeremiah right now. He sanctified him. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. He ordained Jeremiah. Before he hit the womb, you're going to go out there and prophesy against this wicked kingdom. These wicked nations. Even your own people. You're going to go do that. You know, but that's just showing you what that uh he knew us before the womb, predestination, if you will. Let's go to Ephesians chapter one, right quick. Ephesians chapter one, because let me get to Ephesians chapter one, and then go to verse three. Start at verse three. Says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Hamashiach, according as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. He has chosen us in him before the earth was even made. Remember where we started at. He said, Before the earth was created, all everybody obeyed nobody spoke against him already chosen 
I understand that. So he chose us at that particular time. He got these different spirits around him. You're going to be children of the light, children of the dark. You're going to be wicked. You're going to be righteous. You're going to be the children of Israel. You're going to be an Edomite. You're going to be an Elamite. You're going to be a Moabite. You're going to be an Ammonite, a Girgashite, an Ishmaelite. Already picking out the characters for the movie. All right. Verse six, it says, uh, is that what I want? Uh, no, nah, I'm starting at verse four. All right. Ephesians chapter one, verse four. It said, according as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Predestination, children of Israel, the elect, the hopeful elect, chosen without blame. Remember, all Israel is not of Israel, and not all of our people will make it to the kingdom. One third will be uh, saved. All right, verse five. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of the children by Yahweh uh, Mashiach to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. You see that? Predestination. Y'all remember the movie Final Destination? Predestination. We were already selected, chosen to be in the position that we're in right now. That's what our people don't understand. That's what the world doesn't understand about life. Everything is controlled by the most high. He controls it in his hand. You know, whatever he's saying, it will happen. However he fixed it up, it's going to happen that way, whether good or bad. There are no such things as accidents or luck. You know, whatever he say going to happen, that's what's going to happen. But we down here are trying to establish our own will, trying to do what we want to do. That's why we are in the position that we're in right now, following the ways of the world. For now, let's go to the book of John, chapter 10. Go to the book of John, chapter 10. And we're going to start at verse 24. Book of John, chapter 10, verse 24. And it reads, Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, how long do thou take? Does thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. So you got some of our peoples, mainly the leaders, the Sadducees and Pharisees and scribes, the ones who are in charge, who got a position of power, so to speak. They came and surrounded them and asked them, how long doest thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. And how shall I answer them? I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me, but ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So that's a key aspect as to who his chosen are, who are the elect, who are the children of light, the children of promise. It will be those individuals who will hear his voice, hear his commandments, and know him, and do them and follow him. You got a lot of people in this world saying we're Christian. When you ask them what that means, we're Christ-like. Just like them Jewish people. Jew-like. We're Christ-like. We're followers of Christ. So if he tell you to keep these commandments, why don't you keep them? Why do you try to make up wicked doctrines to say that we don't have to keep the commandments, but it's only two commandments? That makes no sense at all. But he letting you know right here that his sheep hear his voice. And he said, I know them and they follow me. Understand that. That's major right there. Let's keep reading though. Uh, verse 28. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Just like if you in this truth. And you on fire, fervent in the spirit. If it be the Lord's will, can't no man pluck you out of this truth. But if it's not of his will, you're going to get plucked out. You're going to be turned over to a reprobate mind. And it's over with. You know, you back out into the world doing your own damn thing, thinking you're living it up. But if we are his sheep, we're going to hear his voice saying what? 
Let's go to Revelation chapter 3, verse 8. What is his voice saying? We put it in the title to a degree. Let's go to the book of Revelation chapter. I don't want to the wrong chapter. 3, verse 8. And it reads, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou has a little strength, and has kept my word, and has not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. You see that, don't you? Them that say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. But I will make them come and worship before thy feet, and to know what I have that I have loved thee. All right. Let's keep reading. <clears throat> because thou hast kept the word of my patience, and I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. See that? Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. So this right here was a perfect excerpt to show you that um, it's people that are claiming to be you, but you got to be patient because the Lord knows what's going on. He's going to make them individuals come to bow before you and worship you because you will be able to stand before them. You know, and he gonna let them know that you have that he has loved you, Israelite man, woman, and child, because you kept his word with patience, and he gonna keep you during that hour of temptation. What is that when them drop them bombs start dropping, when the nukes start going off? He gonna keep you in that hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. He said, "Behold, I come quickly." So hold fast to that which you have. Hold fast. Now, a lot of our brothers and sisters try to dive and read all these different books, but have not mastered the 66 or the 80 books. They all off in all these other books, reading and thinking they learning something, but they being lost, misled, and have not even mastered the 80 books that they are supposed to read. Understand that. That pulls you away. That leads, leads your mind down a path that it's not supposed to travel on. That's why the Lord said, hold fast to that which thou hast. You got 80 books, read them, master them, understand what's in them. So that no man should take your crime because those individuals who write in all those other books, their job is to take your crime, to try to, to tempt you to go off into sin. Their job is to put you through those trials and tribulations. You know, to keep you from shining your light. But as the class stated, don't let them turn your light off. Don't let them do that. By giving you false narrative, false doctrine, false way of living. You know, false way of handling your household, raising your children, conducting your, uh, your own life, your own behavior. You know, don't let them put your light out. Or take your crown. Because we right there, we uh a few seconds for the four quarter buzzer going off. You know, be a couple of inches from crossing over that goal line or crossing over that finishing line. We right there. But in the process of time, don't let nobody steal your crown or turn your light out, you know. From there, let's go to uh John chapter first John chapter three, verse 10. First John chapter three, verse 10. First John chapter three, verse 10. And it reads, and this, <clears throat> the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. <clears throat> So that's simple. That's plain right there. The children of God are manifest by doing what? Righteousness. But you're children of the devil, whoever, whosoever, excuse me, doeth not righteousness. That's the simple. That's the simplicity of how the most high deal. 
but we try to make things complex just to justify our wickedness. The children of God do righteousness. The children of the devil do not do righteousness. They do ungodly, ungodliness. What is righteousness? Keeping the commandment. Keeping the commandments. It's that simple. You know, you can go to uh, Leviticus 25, 55, I believe, to prove that, you know. But we're going to uh, go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm going to start at verse 2. I started verse one. It says, uh, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as the thief in the night. So we all heard this before. The day of the Lord coming as a thief in the night. You don't know when a thief is coming, but you know that majority of the time they come at night. And that doesn't mean that he's going to come at night. It's just showing that you don't know him just like a thief coming at night. A thief does not pull up and let you know I'm sneaking in, I'm breaking in your house. He's just making a comparison. That does not mean your house is coming back at nighttime. All right. Verse 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So we have to be constantly, as a nation of people, being woken up into this truth, understanding what's really and truly going on, we got to constantly be building ourselves up. We can't be taking days off, taking vacations from the truth, you know, putting it off, saying, I, I ain't got time for that right now. We can't be putting it off. The Lord said, when you thinking and when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. You know, breaking the Sabbath, you know, being wicked. Doing what you want to do, you think you're in peace and in safety. Then suddenly destruction come upon you and travail upon a woman, just like a woman when she's giving birth to a child. She can't, when she's giving birth, she can't expect, uh, escape that pain. Now they might try to uh, put the needle in the back, try to ease it. She still can't escape that pain. Just like our people, just like these other nations trying to escape dwell in peace and safety, you ain't going to be able to do these things without keeping these commandments. All right. And it says, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. So being in this truth, you're no longer in darkness unless you're not keeping the commandments. You can say, yeah, I'm an Israelite. Put your beard and your friend is on. You still have to stay awake and see what's going on. You have to be paying attention to the signs. It's more than just stop eating uh, pork, lobster, uh, crab, and uh, shrimp. It's more than not eating catfish anymore. You know, it's bigger than that. You are the children of light. You're supposed to be that shining example. And the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. So when you are awake to what's going on, you're no longer in darkness. You realize that this world is against you. You realize that you're better. You're above all nations. You realize you're supposed to be shining, wearing your fringes boldly every day, not just when you're out teaching or when you're around your brothers and sisters. You're supposed to be wearing your fringes every day. Why? Because you're a light. Children of the day, no excuses being made, nor you're not of darkness. Darkness is the complete opposite of being a light, just like we brought out earlier. One thing established another. When you hide who you are, you're in darkness. You hide because you're scared. You're scared of how people view you. Didn't the Lord tell you, fear not them that kill the body, but them, but him that kill the body and the soul? Why are we walking around fearing man? Before you knew who you were, you ain't fearing then. You were walking around being wicked as hell, just like everybody else. Now you in the truth, you hide yourself. Understand that. 
It said, therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Be sober. Be constantly enduring in the scriptures, studying, watching, praying, fasting every all the time. Don't be sleep. Taking days off, I don't want to read. I ain't got time. My job is too important. I got to pay these bills. You're making excuses. You, you're going back into the world. You're drunk. You don't know which way to go. Lord said, there, therefore, let us not sleep. Don't sleep on the Lord. Don't sleep on what your enemy got up their sleeve. But let us watch and be sober. Put the bottle down. Put the cigarettes, the blunts down, brothers, sisters. Put down the ways of this world and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, meaning they sleep in darkness. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Freaks come out at night. People love to get drunk at night. But this ain't necessarily talking about at night. It's talking about in darkness. Sleep. People, they don't want to wake up into this truth. They don't want to realize that they are Israelites, that they're supposed to be doing something. They want to stay asleep. When we had the hey brother, we hitting that uh, that alarm is going off. They had to try to hit the snooze, but I ain't trying to wake up. Leave me alone. Keep it moving. They drunken off the ways of this world. They still want to go to the club. They still want to pull up, get drunk out and blown out of their mind. They still want to hate their brother, lay up and make whores out of their women. They want to be drunken in the night. That's what that's going into. Verse 8, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. So we got to be girding ourselves up on a constant, building ourselves up, putting on the armor of God, you know. Verse 9, for Yahweh have not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord, Yahweh shall march up. So he want us to obtain salvation. That's why he kept sending messengers, prophets, disciples, apostles. To do what? To try to wake you up, to give you that knowledge that you need to obtain salvation. Think about that. Verse 10, who died for us, whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. He came and he died for our sins, the nation of Israel's sins. So why in the hell we choose to stay asleep? Ah, oh, man, the commandments are done away with. Brother, sister, the commandments were put there so that you can live a better life, a longer life. Why you want to stay asleep? Why you want to continue to indulge in the, the wickedness of this world? Eating swine, I, I need that. On, I, that's good eating right there. I can't put that down. Next thing you know, you dead at 40, 45, 50, because you don't want to put down the abominable foods. That's stupid. But that's the mindset of some of our people. Got to die off something. Come on now. We better than that. Verse 11 says, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even also ye do. So in the process of this time, we knowing who we are, knowing who they are, we supposed to be building each other up, edifying one another, not just going to work all the damn time. You ain't got time to edify your brothers and sisters, but you disgusted at how they look and how they perform on a day to day basis. What are you willing to do to teach them? You shaking your head, you're mad. I can't believe. What are you willing to do? Are you building yourself up? No. Are you reading? Are you studying? Are you making excuses? You need to ask yourself that every morning when you're looking in that mirror. What are you in this for? What's your purpose? Are you building up the people around you? Or are you just there in the moment? What the hell is going on with you? Ask yourself these things. We are the children of light, children of promise. Understand that. Let's go to uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14. I know I didn't hit a lot of precept, but uh, these are the things that we need. 
Book of Proverbs, chapter 4, <clears throat> verse 14. Let's read. It says, enter not into the path of the wicked and go not into the way of men. That's simple. It said, avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it and pass away. But they sleep not, except they have done mischief and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink, and drink the wine of violence. You see that? The Lord is telling us to stay out of darkness, stay away from it. Don't enter into the path of the wicked. Don't go into the way of evil men. Hey, bro, hey, we got a birthday party at the strip club. Come on, man. Hey, it's on me, man. You just got to just come. Nah, you enter not into that path. You avoid it. You pass not by it. Turn from it. You get the hell on. Just like Joseph did when the sister tried to uh, get him to sleep with him. Try to get the man to commit a, uh, adultery. He got the hell on. He left his garment in her hand. Said, avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it. Hey, bro. Hey, sis. Hey, I got this new outfit for you. Hey, hey I got these guys over here. They want to do this. They want to do that. They paying too. Hey, avoid that. You can't go down there. You can't live that same lifestyle you was living beforehand. You got to turn away from it says, for they sleep not, except they have done mischief. They don't know how to sleep, especially these other nations. They, they can't get no good sleep until they have done something wicked. That's why it's always something wicked popping up every day. You be like, I can't believe this happened. Is this really what's going on in the world? I can't believe it. Then. You say, all right, then... That's the last thing. Can't nothing else shock me. The very next day, something else pop up. You be like, what the hell going on? Men marrying uh, men. A man getting an award for changing himself to be a damn woman. Bravery award. They celebrating. They clapping for him. He getting paid behind. You got superstar athletes letting their child turn from a boy to a girl. They being celebrated by the president, his wife. Wickedness. They can't sleep until they've done mischief. They sleep is taken away until they cause something to fall. They eat the bread of wickedness. Why? Because they stay in ghost and wickedness. All right. Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 60. So we got to flee from wickedness. We can't be. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It looked kind of good, but what should I do? Nah, you got to flee from that, brother. Just flee from it. those wicked thoughts. You're thinking about backbiting, murmuring. Flee from that. Somebody bring it to you now. Nah, uh, what are you doing to help them? Stop encouraging people to come to you with the backbiting or the murmuring. Shut it down right then and now. Give them the commandments. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verse 1. It says, Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. So we supposed to arise, Israel. It says, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Just like we talking about. We in this world, not of this world, but we living in it. We supposed to be shining because we find out who we are. We understand that we are the Israelites. We realize we supposed to be shining, being that example, that righteous example. We are the light of the world, you know, but we also realize that we're, it's darkness that covers the earth. Why? Because the wicked rule the earth. Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So the wicked don't know how to do righteousness. So everything that they are doing will be darkness. Everything that they teach and preach will be darkness. It's no different than what we see today. Let's get an example of that. This is a Instagram post on uh, Arizona school is about to open an LGBT middle school. Tuition paid by our tax dollars. See that? 
these are the things that's going on. Uh, a whole middle school. That's how hard they willing to push this. Why? Why? Because darkness shall cover the earth. Gross darkness. That's gross. Disgusting. Filthy. An abomination. The Lord said he hate all abomination. Sirach 15, 13. He hate all abomination. And if you love the Lord, you hate it too. This disgusts me that they are able to do these type of things. But our people struggle to get jobs, houses, start businesses. But they can start schools like this. Paid for with tax dollars. They do what they want to do because this world is giving it to the hand of the wicked. Your president is for this. He encourages it. He fights for it. Like I said, they can't sleep unless they're doing some type of mischief. All right, let's go to the book of Philippians. Chapter <clears throat> 2, verse 12. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Excuse me. It says, wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, you see that, not as in my presence only, but how much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's what a lot of our people don't realize. We have to work out our own salvation, even though we going through it, uh, these oppressive situations, we going through captivity together, oppression, uh, the ups and downs the trials and tribulations as a nation of people, we going through it together. We're going to have to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling because we're not always going to be around each other. And as my brothers be talking about, it's about your integrity, what you do when no one's around. When you think no one is watching because the Lord is watching at all times. But what are you doing? That's the question. Verse uh, 13, it says, for it is, God, which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So do all things without murmuring and disputing. That ye may be blameless and harmless. The sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. So we got to be building ourselves up so that we can shine as that bright light being blameless in the midst of this crooked and perverse nation that we live in. Babylon the Great. You know? We gotta uh, learn who we are and stand on that. Stand for the word of the Most High God. With fear and trembling. Knowing that if we don't, we gonna get the worst of, uh, we gonna get a, a just judgment. You know? Don't get caught up in this life, though. All right. Let's go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 1. You know what? Let me go to Luke, chapter 21. Luke. Chapter 21, and verse 34. Luke, chapter 21, verse 34. And it reads, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with sophane and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that the day come upon you unaware. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. So you can't be uh, caught up in this world uh, trying to care for the ways or uh, the ways of this life, you know, being uh, drunk with the philosophies, the doctrines, you know, uh, man, I got to keep Christmas and Halloween is for the kids. That's drunkenness. Uh, I got to celebrate my birthday. That's drunkenness. Overcharged with surveying, being greedy. The cares of this life, our people caught up just by paying bills. I got to go. I got to go to work. I got to. 
Yeah, you got to go to work, but that shouldn't be your main focus. You know, that ain't what life is about, brother and sister. Yeah, you got to make it some ends meet, but you should be doing more for your people and for this kingdom to come for the most high on a daily basis than just going to work. You know, for as a snare shall it come on them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Because of these things, our people are going to be caught up in it like a, a bird in a trap or a rat in a trap. That's why I say pray always and be accounted so that you can be counted worthy to escape the things that's going to come. You got to be keeping these commandments, learning, teaching, and applying, you know, or learning, applying, and teaching. Excuse me. Let me word it that way. But for now, let's go to the book of Ephesians. Chapter 5, verse 1. Book of Ephesians. Chapter 5, verse 1. It says, Be ye therefore followers of Yahweh as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also have loved us, and have given himself for an offering and a sacrifice to Yahweh for a sweet smelling savior. But fornication in all uncleanliness, covetous, covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. So we don't want that stain on our name. It says, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks, praising and or exhorting your brothers and sisters. That's what we should be doing. For this ye know that no whoremonger, no unclean person, nor covetous man who is in idolatry, having any have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ uh, God. So these individuals who perform these acts, which is breaking the commandments, would not enter into the kingdom. So that shuts down also that narrative that all you have to do is have faith or that the commandments are done away with. Understand that. These are commandments right here. Idolatry, worshiping of other gods. Worshiping of yourself, birthday worshiping, you know, Santa Claus, leprechauns, you know, celebrities. If you're doing these things, you will not inherit the kingdom. Covetousness, wanting what somebody else got, fornicating, sleeping around with everything moving. Understand that uncleanness, you're lying, you're filthy. Foolish talking, you're not going to get to the kingdom like that. Let's go to verse 6. It said, let no man deceive you with vain words, because these pastors will tell you these things. These teachers will tell you these things. Sometimes your parents will tell you these things. But the Lord said, let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. So the children of darkness are not only of the other nation, but of those of our own who choose to be disobedient. Because we believe in, uh, we are being deceived and we believe in vain words, we catch the wrath of the Most High. That's where them stray bullets come from. A car swerving from one lane to another lane. Dying all of a sudden from uh, certain heart attacks, cancers. You know, we believe in vain words and we are deceived. We trust more in doctors than into the word. We trust the word of man versus the most high. We don't even look to the most high. That's where he told us to go first. We go into the doctors. That's backwards. If you read the scripture, you say in Sirach 30, the sinner falls into the hand of the physician. So if you're breaking the commandments, you're going to be falling into the hand of the doctor all the time. Think about that. Verse 7, it says, Be ye not therefore partakers with them, not partakers with these individuals, children of disobedience. For ye were sometimes in darkness, but now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. We used to be in the club before we came into this truth. We used to be out doing God knows what, breaking every commandment. But ye are light in the Lord. Walk as the children. For the fruit of the Spirit is as in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. 
and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Reprove them. So them people used to kick it with that was doing all manner of wicked. He's supposed to be rebuking them, showing them the path they supposed to be on. Shining and being that example constantly. Rather than trying to be cool or popular. Hey, stand for the word of the Lord. Stand and be that shining example. One, you were created to do so. Predestined, if you will. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And it says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. You going to the strip club, blowing your money, being in a lustful spirit. How the hell is that going to be fruitful or beneficial to you? It's not. Celebrating birthdays. How is that? It's not. Sleeping around with different women. How is that profitable? It's not. Think about it. selling dope to your to your brothers and sisters. How is that going to be fruitful or beneficial? It's not. Verse 12. Well, now nah, I'll leave it at that. Let's go to the uh, book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 12, right quick. Book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 12, and it reads, For we wrestle not against flood, flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual wickedness in high places spiritual wickedness in high places and we fighting against the darkness and the rulers of this darkness of this world on a day-to-day -day basis and they constantly putting it in your face you know let me show you what i mean right quick let's go to i'm gonna have to do something else right quick bear with me show you a quick little uh excerpt Uh, is this where I want? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Make sure it's on the screen. What the hell? Okay. So is that a coincidence? That while you're trying to disintegrate the black family through non-traditional forms of life, through black on black crime, through police genocide, through poor nutrition, poor health care, all these weapons, the snow bunny crisis, uh, along with that, you see so many commercials now where it's the black man with the white woman or the black woman with the white man. Clearly, there's an agenda to brainwash our children into either being with someone of the same sex or someone of, an, of another race. And I think the gender wars coming at this time plays into the hand of the government's agenda to destroy the black community. So is that a coincidence? So is that a coincidence? No. You fighting against what? Spiritual wickedness in high places. Against rulers of darkness. Rulers of darkness. You know? They don't care about nothing going on but destroying the nation of Israel. Whether we want to believe it or not. Excuse me. Let me get back to Sharing the screen. I'm going to read it again. The book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Only somebody in a high position would be able to push the agenda that they're pushing right now. The president passed the law years back. Open the floodgates for the, uh, the alphabet boys to go out there and do what they wanted to do. Now you got all the top companies from the NFL, NBA to Disney to uh, anything you can think of. They pushing it, pushing that agenda to destroy our nation of people. Think about that. They starting LGBTQ middle schools. How wicked is that? Like the brother would bring it out. Every commercial you turn on, every movie you see, you got the brother dating somebody of another nation or vice versa. 
you know, spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what we're dealing with. So we got to be mindful of these things. Why? Because these other nations are against us. They hate us. They want to destroy us. A lot of people say, oh, I don't know about that. That's your interpretation. Well, let's, let's go read it. But we ain't going to speak nothing that's not in the scriptures. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 83, classic precept that we bring out quite a bit. But for those who are new tuning in, who ain't never seen or heard about who they are, what's going on, we got to bring it out. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 83. We'll start at verse 1. <clears throat> it says, keep not thy silence, O God. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, meaning an angry gathering, a protest. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Those are the Gentiles. They hate the Lord. Mainly because he chose us and not them. They hate his commandments. They hate instruction. Think about that. Verse 3, it says, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people. They sitting in these think tanks in these rooms saying, hey, how can we get the uh, the nation of Israel to die out? We've been throwing dope in their hood since the 80s. What else can we do? We've been putting liquor stores on their corner since the 80s. We've been frying up the chicken, killing them all. We got the worst restaurants in the neighborhood, the worst schools. We giving them guns. What else can we do? Here's an idea. Let's try to get them from reproducing. Let's turn the man to the man and the woman to the woman. Let's make the man or the woman hate the man and the man hate the woman. So that they will not come together and reproduce. Maybe we can advertise to them that being with us is better than being with their own people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Crafty counsel. I'm going to read it again. Psalms 83 and 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That's why every time you hear Israel, they, they put in the picture of the Jewish man. They don't want you to remember who you are. They want you to think that you're a Gentile. You're anything but great or chosen. You're anti-Semitic. They don't want your name to be remembered. Think about that. Verse 5, it says, For they have consulted together with one consent, one mindset. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom. These are the different nations that are listed. From verse 6 all the way down to verse 8, where are even 9. All these different nations of people have come together against the nation of Israel with one mindset to destroy our name and our nation. And they are still in agreement to, to, until this day. Think about that. Tabernacles of Edom, that's your so-called white man. Ishmaelites, those are Arabs. Moab, Chinese, Hagarim, Africans. Gabal, Africans. Ammon, Japanese. Amalek, so-called Jewish. And it goes on and on. But these nations of people are against the nation of Israel. Even though we have destroyed them in time past, they are against us. They have crafty council meetings on how to destroy us. Why do you think your neighborhoods are like they are? Why do you think your people hate each other like they do? And stand up and fight for these other nations because they have had crafty council meetings. Crafty council meetings know anything about these other nations one thing that they love to do is have meetings it's hard to get our people to show up to a meeting let alone have them all the time show up on time or the short period it's hard for our people to have meetings think about that but from now uh i want to show something else that these individuals are doing and our people are blind to the fact Let's see. Uh, that's not it. What a other video. This is it. Yeah. Let me switch it up because sometimes the sound don't play. These are some of the things that are going on that our people are not aware of. Spiritual wickedness in high places. 
pay attention to what's being said is all these hotels so like while everybody was paying attention to the submarine and everything else that's going on in the news yeah all every hotel that you go to when you go out of town all the big name a-list ones they all getting sued right now for trafficking kids people finding floorboards with holes cut into tunnels finding kids so the reason why they found out somebody was at the hilton i think they was i don't know what actual state but they was at the hilton so they was wondering like she was trying to hang her coat up and her coat fell but when it fell it was like a little wire hooked on the coat so she like what the fuck? come to find out it's a camera so now she got searching the room and they got little apps you can use on your phone to take of his cameras and all kind of shit. so she mm-hmm. did that and found like two more one in a little screw she got the moving the furniture one of the floorboards had like one of the pieces like cut out different from the shape of the whole design of the floor when she pulled it up her her dude like look he put the camera down there and it's like a whole little walkway you could jump down and walk through so this is what's going on in a lot of these big name hotels Wyndham, Hilton, you know, they got trap doors and tunnels, cameras hidden all throughout these rooms. Even though they make laws and say that it's an invasion of your privacy, they still doing it anyway. Think about this, still doing it anyway. So this woman was trying to hang up a coat, coat fell, they end up finding the tunnel accidentally. Listen what happens. To air connected to every room. So he jumped down, he walked all the way through and they'll find some kids. Did some people get arrested for that right there? The man said he walked down the tunnel and found kids in there. Kids. People at Whoa. the hotel, yeah, they got arrested for it. Whoa, so they, yeah, so they, they start going to all the hotels throughout the whole United States and start finding that they involved in they be involved basically mm-hmm. like housing the sex trafficking shit. So when the people come with your kids, your kids in the midst, like trying to find them, they didn't already got them. So it's like- These are the things that we got to be careful of. A lot of our people just happy to go on vacation, you know, to get out and go do something. One of them where your kid went, somebody snatched me. They in a damn hotel in a, in a tunnel somewhere. Wicked. And they floating them and shipping them all around the world, making money off of them. And all these different companies are being exposed. All these big time leaders, Hollywood actors, uh, presidents, senators, CEOs being caught up in this madness. It's big money in that. But it's wicked as hell. That's why we got to be the children of light. Standing up boldly against the wickedness of this world, against the workers of iniquity, pointing it out, you know, making our head, forehead hard against them, prophesying against the wickedness of these kingdoms, constantly exposing them, showing our people what's really going on, because our people tend to overlook these things, just like they overlook their own people getting gunned down every day and say, all right, it's all right, It's, it's just what it is. That's wicked, you know. Let's go to the book of Psalms. Book of Psalms, chapter 37, verse 32. Let me get back, putting it back on the screen right quick. All right. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 37. I believe it was 32. And it reads, The wicked watches the righteous and seek to slay him. You see that? The wicked constantly watching the righteous. And if you ain't watched it yet, go check out that movie, uh, they clone Tyrone. You're going to see some wickedness in there, and they're going to show you how the wicked are constantly watching the rights. Meanwhile, feeding us with the things to help destroy us. Check that movie out when you get a chance. They clone Tyrone. I think it's on Netflix or something. They move with Jamie Foxx. But uh, it's a good movie. And if you uh, have been awakened to this truth, you will see what message they were trying to convey without conveying the message, you know. The things that are spoken and written in the scriptures, they showed in that movie. But it said the wicked watches the righteous and seek to slay him. 
That's what these other nations are doing constantly. It got to the point where they think that they're going to be doing a service for the most high, you know? And they've been doing it for a long time, thinking they're doing something righteous. All right. Why do they do these things? Because they know that their time is almost up. Let's prove that. Let's go to uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. And it reads, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil... For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he have but a short time. So they know that they got a short time because they see the Israelites waking up. So they're going to be pulling out all the stops, pulling out all the tricks out the bag. They say, hey, it's almost over with. Hey, we got to jam them up right quick. We, let's open up some LGBT uh, middle schools. Let's put it in every video, every commun uh, every cartoon, every movie, every TV show. Let's put it in their schools. Let's put it in the stores. Let's put it in the music, in the videos. Hey, uh, let's snatch the kids, sell them up, sell them off. Uh, they know they got but a short time to do the things that they do, you know. And they'll think they'll be thinking having the people that are actually doing this, thinking that they're doing a good service, even though they're being wicked as hell at the same time. Let's go to uh Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. And it reads, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. This is what we living in. This is what we see. You know, everything is upside down here in this society, in this world that we live in, especially here in Babylon the Great, United States of America. You know, they call evil good. Sleeping around and having a bunch of uh, kids by different men or different women, they call that good. They say good and evil. Being married, that's evil. The woman can, she get half your money. She can get alimony. She can do this. She can do that. They say that's evil. The Lord said marriage is honorable. They put darkness for light. Let's give you an example of what I'm talking about. All right, bear with me. All right. As you can see, you got, uh, I'm going to show you this book called Indian Slavery in Colonial Times. All right. With the uh, present limits of the United States from 1913. This book was written by Almond Wheeler Lauber. All right. Just like it said in John 16, they shall put you out of the synagogue, J, the time coming that whosoever killeth you will think that he doing God's service. And this is how these individuals will start thinking like they doing something good for the most high. Now, this book was written and published in 1913. All right. Lord willing, you can read uh, what's highlighted, but it says the high authority of the church sanctioned the institution of slavery to the extent that the leading theologians had declared all barbarous and infidel nations who shut their ears to the truth of Christianity, fair objects of raping, captivity, and slavery. All right. It says, Hernando de Escalante Fernando, uh, in his writing in Florida, he declared it is belief that the Indians can never be made submissive and become Christians. So he advocated they all should be taken, placed on ships and scattered throughout the various islands and even on the Spanish main where they might be sold as his majesty sell his vessels to the grandees in Spain. So this right here is a book that I brought out 
to show also how uh, the Native Americans also went through the same things that we went through. We were all just like the Hispanics, just like the so-called Negro. We were all oppressed at the same, well, not at the same, we're all oppressed together, you know. But he said that they were not, uh, could not be made submissive or become Christians. So put them on a slave ship and scatter them where uh, throughout the islands. Says uh, the Spanish exploring expeditions were war expeditions in the sense that they aimed to conquer and retain from the crown the territory through which they passed. All these expeditions captured and retained Indians as slaves. The enslavement of Indians by the Spaniard. Oh, let me go back. The enslavement of the Indians by the Spaniard in the early years of occupation was legalized by a royal decree which declared the act to be in accord with the laws of God and man and justified it on the ground that Indians could otherwise not be reclaimed from. Let me see if I. All right. Come on now. Uh, to the act to accord the laws of God and man and justify it on the grounds that Indians could otherwise not be reclaimed from idolatry and converted to Christianity. You see that? That's how the so-called white man or the Spaniard conquistador were actually rolling around handling business, thinking that they were doing the acts of the most high. Conquistador, what does that actually mean? A conqueror especially one of the 16th century Spanish conquerors of Mexico and Peru. Conqueror, that's what the word conquistador means. So our brothers and sisters of the uh, Northern Kingdom understand that you were conquered by the Spaniard, Esau. Think about that. Here's a photo showing how they came and brought that foolishness. That's why you're so heavily involved in uh, Christianity or that Catholic faith, because they brought it to you. They conquered you and forced you to believe it. You know? Still to this day, you hold dear to it and have no understanding as to what you're doing. The same people who took us captive forced us to believe in their religion or die. As you can see in these images, coming to the to the islands from Mexico on down, well, from the United States on down, but more so Mexico on down to the South America, that's where the Spaniards were, at, conquistador, tying the man to a pole, getting ready to set him on fire, putting the cross in his face. Here's another image. How they were trying to conquer the uh, Hispanics and the Native Americans by the conquistador. You see that? Also, come on now, get off the screen. All right. This picture right here, uh, the caption underneath it says, the Spaniards took babies from their mother's breasts, grabbing them by the feet and smashing their heads against rocks. They built a long giblet, long enough for the toes to touch the ground and prevent strangling, and hang 13 natives at the time of the honor of Christ our savior and the 12 apostles. Then straw was wrapped around their torn bodies and they were burned. You see that? How wicked is that? Man getting ready to uh, bash the baby against the stone. That's what we're going to give them in return. They hanging our brothers and sisters, setting them on fire, thinking they doing something for the Lord. Wickedness. That's what we got to deal with. And all in name of doing what? Getting our people to bow down to their idols to their religions. This is what the scripture was talking about. Woe to them. They say evil is good and good is evil. Put light for darkness. They captured our people, conquered our people, our brothers and sisters, 
and forced us to do what? Convert to their religions. Now our people fight tooth and nail to bow down to these images. Statues, false images. And when you show them word for word in the scriptures, our people still can't get past it. That's how destroyed we are as a nation of people. That's why it's important for us to stand tall and be that light we were created to be, to help bring our brothers and sisters back into the fold. Part of that is, once again, putting that light for darkness. Now they're trying to create these different religions where they have created them, but now they're trying to forge them and make them one. And they call it Krishlam. <laughs> the Catholic Muslim Interfaith Council created by Pope Francis announces new Krishlam headquarters opening in 2022 that combines a mosque and a church according to the signed covenant. The, war, the one world religion. And they signed it under the human fraternity meeting. Fraternity. Now my brother did a class on fraternities not too long ago. Check that out when you get a chance as well. But let's find out more about this uh, Krishlam or this uh, human fraternity meeting. Let's see what we can find out about that. All right. Let me, uh... All right, bear with me. <laughs> All right. So this document of human fraternity says the, uh, the document of human fraternity for world peace and living together, also known as the uh, Abu Dhabi Declaration, is a joint statement signed by Pope Francis of the Catholic Church and Sheikh Ahmed El Tahi and Grand Amman uh, Azar on February 4th, 2019 in Abu Dhabi, the United Arab Emirates. The document was born of a fraternal open discussion between France Pope Francis and Taib and is concerned with how different faiths can live peaceably in the same world. And it is meant to be a guide on advancing a culture of, cultural of mutual respect so they're trying to combine a religions. It says the higher committee of human fraternity has established instituted to fulfill the aspirations of the document on human fraternity internationally. Uh, let's see, the principles of compassion and human solidarity embodied in this text are the same ones that later inspired the declaration designating February 4th as the International Day of Human Fraternity fraternity so uh this was something that was declared <laughs> by the pope or the crit or the catholic church and of the uh the arabs ishmael the human fraternity order to do what try to combine uh two religions in one spot one world religion this is what we're dealing with you know wickedness in high places but in the time and <clears throat> things that we go through we have to uh flee from this wickedness like the scripture was telling us we can't go into it don't entice it flee from it don't even go down that path we got to flee from it. let's go to the book of revelation chapter 18 because this world is full of filth wickedness and it's amazing sometimes being in this truth that I was actually a part of it. You know, that we were a part of it. All praise the most high for waking us up, though. All right, let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So here in Babylon, you're going to experience every wicked spirit, uh, uh, 
I have it's a habitation of devils, and this is also uh spiritually called Egypt. You know, when you read the book of Tobit, uh the, the angel was telling Tobit when you present the uh burn this perfume or this uh this heart, it's going to uh make the evil spirit flee out of the sister Sarah and it would flee into Egypt. So America, Babylon the Great is also known as spiritually Sodom and Egypt. So every unclean uh, spirit or devil is located here in this land. And the hold of every foul spirit in the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. You see that? So every nation is here. Every spirit is here in this nation. It says, for all nations have drunk of the wine of wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. So, verse 4 said, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye deceive not yourselves, or receive not of her plague, excuse me. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God have remembered her iniquities. So, seeing all that's going on, and I brought out a few little things that should pique our people's interest, but uh, nonetheless, we have to flee from wickedness. We cannot uh, continue to be engulfed in this world, in this society. We have to leave all. We have to flee from it. Come out of her, out of Babylon, that mystery whore Babylon, United Snakes. Damn Erica, however you want to say it. We have to flee out of the ways of America. Flees out of the ways of the wicked, out of the way of the darkness. You know, flee from darkness. You know, and prepare thyself for the battle by studying constantly. You know, like we read earlier, it's going to be a small remnant that's going to wake up. A small plant. Let's go to uh, 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 4. Verse 18, and it reads, And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So if we barely going to make it, Lord willing, to be saved, where are the ungodly and the sinner going to appear? And if we scarcely going to be barely making it, where should our mindsets be? We should be constantly studying, enduring, building ourselves up so we can, when things hit the fan, we know exactly how to move, you know? Not to continue to move in wickedness, but to move in righteousness. Uh, let's go uh, to 2nd Ezra's one more time, to chapter 6, verse 21. And we're going to go to verse 27 and 28. That'll be my last one. All right. This is the book of 2nd Edris, chapter 6, verse 26. And it reads, And then the men that are received shall see it, who have not tasted death from their birth, and the heart of the inhabitants shall be changed and turned into another meaning. For evil shall be put out, and deceit shall be quenched. So evil shall be put out and corruption be, shall be overcome, quenched. As for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome. And the truth, which have been so long without fruit, shall be declared. So that's what we're living for. That's what we're pushing for. Because we see the wicked and the evil that's going on in this world. And we're striving to get out of it. And the only way we're going to do these things is by keeping the commandments, staying faithful and enduring. And then evil shall be put out and the deceit shall be quenched. So Lord willing, you brothers and sisters understand the magnitude of what's going on and understand we got to continue to push day in and day out. We, can, we are the children of the light, not of darkness. And we got to continue to push and not let them turn our light out. Continue to shine and be that light you were created to be. And on that note, I'm your brother Ananias for AOI, the Awakening of Israel. Uh, Got to give all honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh for the abundance of all things. Appreciate you, brothers and sisters, tuning in. 
I hope that you learned some. Hope you took good notes. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you like. Make sure you share this content. I'm your brother Ananias once again for AOI, the Awakening of Israel. I say shalom, shalom, peace and greetings, and I'm out. Shalom.